this is gonna be interesting stuff hey what's up guys uh, I'm gonna do a different video today uh, because I came across this guy he looks like a good dude he looks like a good guy but I think he has a problem he follows he follows the romantic side um, side of history or the victor's history so to speak because he follows that romanticized narrative and um, and uh, regarding Macedonia and he's not he's listening everybody except or but Macedonians and <laughs> Macedonians are the ones that are being neglected here right um, so I would like to go through this video with, with this guy uh, of this guy this is uh, what I'm gonna do a commercial for him he's the Samuels Fortress channel you can go ahead and watch, watch his videos I don't mind uh, if he has a, a value to give to you guys, you can of course go ahead and watch him. But as far as Macedonia is concerned, you would want to watch this guy and then watch another guy that claims he's Macedonian, that claims he, he grew up in Macedonia and knows the customs of the land over there, which is me. All right. But there are many others. Uh, I, I suggest to you guys that you you go and and check. Be I'm a Christian, but and be like the Bereans, guys. Check everything that's been said to you, okay? Check everything to see whether this guy is talking the truth or not. Think with your own head, right? Use the Socratic method. This guy is probably Bulgarian. He doesn't have the Socratic method, right? He's not native. That was a joke. But anyway, this guy can use the Socratic method. You can use the Socratic method. And with, the, with that method, you can, you can get to the real truth, to the absolute truth, right? There are no two truths. There's only one truth right so when you use that socratic method you get logical coherent uh, 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 thoughts that you get with uh, a tunnel of, of logical thoughts you don't just uh, uh, drop a thought and then you think this is true no you get to a certain claim by using logical tunnels so to speak right and then uh, so let's move forward and see what these guys has to say and as I as I as we watch this video I'm gonna jump in I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to jump in to correct this guy. Humbly, I would like to correct this guy. He may well be misled by the romanticized propaganda. But hey, guys, he's, he's a big dude. So uh, he should have known to check his facts. Maybe he did check it. But I would really like to see where he, got, where he gets his uh, claims about Macedonia from. So without further ado... Let's check this this dude, this Samuel's Fortress channel, and let's see what he has to say about Macedonians, all right? All right. Hello, and welcome to Samuel's Fortress. I'm your host, Kirill, and today we will be discussing the demographics of ancient Macedonia. So, we're going to start today's... So, demographics of ancient Macedonia. I would suggest that there is a reason why he um, chose this topic because uh, 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 talking about demographics in Macedonia kind of to me being um, n being uh, knowing this m knowing my neighbors my Macedonia's neighbors aspirations about Macedonia uh, I know that they well, they are trying to dis disprove um, Macedonian existence as an ethnicity so that's why he, he goes to this topic a demographics so that he can neglect the Macedonians, which he'll do. Just watch. This uh, video around the year 400 BC. I'm picking the year 400 BC. All right, guy. 400 BC. Somewhat. What about before that? What about the uh, King Macedon that they found, or 600 BC, or something? 800 BC, or something like that. What about that? What about that history? You know, it is arbitrary, as he said. So that's why you don't have to take this as absolute truth. Let's move on. Arbitrarily, but there you go. Arbitrarily. 400 BC. This is the time period just prior to the expansion of mm. ancient Macedon under the rule of Philip II and Alexander mm. the Great. So I think it's a good uh, period of time to show you what the what the demographics. So right before the expansion of Alexander's empire, Philip's empire, right, right before that there was everything but Macedonians, which were or or if there were Macedonians, they were Greek or, or mixed with Illyrians or something like that, right? Right before the expansion of Macedonia. What about before that? What about before that? He hasn't read Peter Green from Oxford, apparently. Let's move on. 
of Macedonia and the Balkans as a whole looks like prior to this uh, expansion of right. the ancient Macedon. So mm. if we look at the three regions of, of the territory of Macedonia. Uh, I got to say, three regions of the territory of Macedonia is relatively new stuff. Uh, it came about after the uh, conquest of the neighboring country, Serbia, uh, a little bit of uh, in, in Albania, but mostly Serbia took part. Of, of the whole which is Macedonia, which is Vardarska Macedonia, right? Which is today's Republic of Macedonia. Uh, not, not have, not, I don't have anything against Serbians, bro. It was the day, it was the time of the day, right? Uh, people were stupid, people were barbaric in nature, uh, much more than they are today. The other two parts are uh, Piri Macedonia, which is in Bulgaria, and AG in Macedonia, which is in Greece. Right, that, a whole Macedonia consists of these three parts, but these three parts are political, politic. They're, they're politically separated, right? Uh, they they weren't uh, separated as such in antiquity. In antiquity, there was Upper Macedonia and Lower Macedonia, right? And there were Macedonian tribes that uh, they 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 often waged war between each other. That that doesn't mean they weren't Macedonian, right? Let's move on. So there, there's not three three parts. There are three parts, but in a, in a more uh, modern sense, right? In more in the more ancient and original sense, there were only two parts, which is Upper Macedonia or Paionia. I'm gonna get to that later, and then uh, Ionia, which is Lower Macedonia. Um, if we go back, if we go way back before the Hellenic uh, invasion, you would understand that uh, Athens was a Pelasgian village. As uh, Herodotus says, right? Uh, so that being said, the Hellenes they 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 came right about that time, around 800 maybe earlier, uh, thousand uh, BC, right? And they encountered the Ionians, uh, which were Yuntas or Yunta, which were the ancient Pelasgian people, right? Pa Ionia is Upper Ionia or Upper Macedonia. Okay, let's move on. Even though this is not mainstream history, guys, I'm giving you I'm giving you uh, thoughts that are are uh, uh, how, how do you say this uh, um, uh, 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 backed up by historical sources, and we can we can debate any time on this. We can debate any time on this with every with any issue that you may have about this. Yeah. Let's go. Like we described in the previous video, you have a G in Macedonia, Vardar Macedonia, and Piri Macedonia. Right. At this time. There are three major civilizations on the Balkans. At this time, right? 400 BC. Three major civilizations, okay? And all three of them are represented within the territory of Macedonia. All right. So all the three are represented. I don't see how when Philip threw the Illyrians out. All right. So you have the Hellenic civilization. The Hellenic civilization. The Hellenic civilization, I don't see how it was present in, in Macedonia at that time. Except for... the. Um, um, Philip incorporated some architectural, maybe, uh, 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 knowledge and, and some other uh, military knowledge because he was, he, he was taken as a hostage in Thebes, right? He was taken as a hostage in Thebes and then, then he was sent back to Macedonia in order to be a puppet there. But what he did, he, he, he took power in Macedonia after he got back from Th uh, Thebes and he was a genuine Macedonian king, a barbaric king according to the Hellenes and the Mastenes and Plutarch and others that say that Macedonians spoke different language than Greeks, Hellenes. So what he, Philip did, he used the same strategy of the Thebans and he chose a puppet to put in Thessaly. But this guy needs to read about this. Anyway. The Illyrian civilization and the Thracian civilization. I don't, I really have no idea where he get this from. Now there, w there was not Illyrian um, civilization in Macedonia as in a separate totally separate ethnicity than Macedonians. The, the ancient Macedonian name for God was Il. That's where you got Ili Ada. That's where you got uh, Ilion, right? Troya. That's where you got... Um, uh, uh, that's on the 2nd of August, uh, Philip uh, 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 conquered the Hellenes at Chironea, which, which was celebrated later in Christianity in Macedonia as the day of Saint Elijah. il -ia. That's what we call it, so on and so forth. So... Illyrians, at most, were, were something like today's Macedonians and Serbians are, right? They're both Slavic, 
but they're not that close. They're not that. They're not the same exactly, right? But they're connected. They're cousins. That's how Illyrians and Macedonians were. Okay. Civilization. Now, when I use the term civilization, I don't mean to imply that these are a unified peoples. A lot of times, these civilizations have competing tribes, states, city states uh, within them. What I mean by it, so they're not unified in any meaningful way. What? What I mean by what? civilization is that these are people who share roughly the same language, custom. The Illyrians and Macedonians share. They did share those the same, pretty much the same language. Yeah. Yep, I would agree with that. Culture, religion, culture too, mythos. religion too. Yep. These are a, a generally uh, closely tied group of tribes that form a civilizational zone. So that can be the case with Illyrians, but that cannot be a case with Macedonians, right? Arbitrary, you say. Yes, indeed. So if you look at the three civilizational zones, like I said, in, in, in the... Three in civilizational the zones. Now, this is a... Ah, uh, guys, they... Well, today, politicians tried to make Macedonia a Switzerland. Uh, the neighboring countries to have influence and to have power, everyone except Macedonians. That's what he's trying to do now. That's what he's trying to present, that Macedonia was like that back in antiquity. Back in antiquity, there was no mental, uh, a mental matrix for that. Nowhere. Right? So each tribe, each ethnicity was its own nation, so to speak. It has its own, had its own systems, had, it, it had its own pantheon, so to speak. Right? It, it, may have, it may well have been the pantheon shared with other nations, but they had um, different names for those gods, for that pantheon. So in a way, it was distinct. Right? There was no such thing as three influencing cultures within the territory of Macedonia. Within the territory of Macedonia was a Macedonian culture that was diverse and, and wholly separate from the Hellenic, from the Illyrian, so to speak, right? And what else? Well, that's it. Let's continue. Region, the Hellenic, Illyrian, and Thracian civilizations. Thracian too, we'll yeah. go through them one by one and kind of describe how they're different and what areas of Macedonia they occupy. So if we look at Aegean Macedonia, modern-day Greek Macedonia, this is occupied by the Hellenic civilization, specifically... Not back in antiquity. Now it is. But not back in antiquity, it wasn't. No, no, no. Even ancient sources tell you... As a matter of fact, I'm going to let you... I'm going to tell you right now, guys. Ancient sources tell you that the Greeks, the Greeks themselves, considered the most northern part of Greece was Thessaly, not Macedonia. These guys doesn't know his material, right? So he doesn't know the ancient sources. What he narrates from is a 19th century romanticized propaganda. But it's all right. So well, let, me, let me give you the, uh, the proof, the, the citations that the ancient Greeks themselves or ancient sources claim that the most northern part of uh, what you call the Macedonia, um, sorry, uh, Greece, or the Hellen Hellen Hellenistic world was Thessaly. So... Macedonia could not have been part of the Hellenic world back in that time, all right? Just bear with me one second. All right, guys, found it. One sec. All right, let's see. Interesting stuff. All right. Let me show you something, guys. What we got here, these are Macedonian coins written in uh, ancient Demotic script, which two Macedonian academics, Tentov and Boschewski, claim that the day is deciphered as Macedonian in the middle text of the Rosetta Stone. These are Macedonian coins. You can see the Macedonian sun, sun there. These were uh, ancient sources starting from the 3rd century up until the 18th, 19th century that... Uh, that uh, distinguished Macedonians from other ethnicities like Bulgars, Graiki, Tatari, right, which means the Bulgars or the other name for Bulgars and others. But my. Okay. Let me see. My point was. Oh, there it is. So this is my point. I want to show you this, guys. You see? 
For even Greeks, uh, blah, 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 blah. these are all ancient sources that claim the Macedonians were different than the Hellenes. All right. So give me one second to find that northern, the most northern part of Thessaly, guys. All right, there we go. So this is from a Roman Greek historian Strabo. All right. The Thessalians, in particular, wore long robes, probably because they, of all the Greeks, lived in the most northerly part and coldest region. So we're talking about Thessalians here, right? Not Macedonia. Thessaly is south of Macedonia. And as per the, the, Macedo the Roman historian, which were a couple of centuries, they actually lived in that time, let's say. And they noticed that the Greek world, the Hellenic world, was until was up until the uh, uh, the uh, border of Thessaly, right, and other. Okay, let's continue. Basically, the ancient kingdom of Macedon, which we will get to in in a little bit. So, Aegean Macedonia, um, yeah. modern day Greek Macedonia, was at the time part of the Hellenic realm. So he said was at the time part of the Hellenic world, and I just demonstrated that it was not. And I have also. Demosthenes to back up, back me up. I have also others um, sources to back me up when they say that Macedonia spoke different language. Alexander himself, uh, on many occasions, talked to talk to to his companions um, in in his uh, native tongue, so that the Greeks could not understand understand him. Okay, sorry, uh, Samuel's fortress, but guy, you need to go back. And uh, I would I would suggest to this guy to. To listen, if, if he doesn't want to read, to listen at least uh, Plato and the uh, the Republic. I think his tr his brain could well be could well uh, be trained to uh, start use the start using the Socratic method, bro. Because you you you're desperate for logic, right? Um, and the logic yeah. says that you, if if you want to talk about history, you need to go back to the sources, right? We look at. Eastern Vardar Macedonia and Pirin Macedonia, basically. Uh, this is Upper Macedonia. Uh, this was uh, invented in the nineteen in the Balkan Wars, uh, which was 1912, 19th, before the First World War. Right. Um, the eastern half of the modern Republic of North Macedonia and Republic of North Macedonia is non-existent. It is a a a, a uh, occup uh, occ It is an administration that occupied Northern uh, uh, Republic of Macedonia. And uh, this guy just doesn't know. He, he's just talking the Victor's uh, history. That's it. He's just narrating their, their, their version of history, which is subjective. It's not objective. And of Bulgarian Macedonia, this is... Bulgarian Macedonia? Is that a thing now? Occupied by the Thracian civilization. The Thracians... Thracians never occupied Macedonia. Thracians never occupied Macedonia. They were left, even in, in the, um, listen, guy, when the Romans came, they were presenting themselves as, as the protectors of all Hellenes, of all Hellenes, right? Of all Greeks. Why they didn't put Macedonia in there? Why they didn't put Trace in there? Or, or something like that, right? Because if they occupied if Thracians occupied Macedonia, that means that, that the Romans would have fought war with the Thracians, but they didn't. Um, also occupy Who? Uh, the modern-day territory of the Republic of Bulgaria. So yes, they did. Uh, Eastern Macedonia, all Thracians. the way to the Black Sea, pretty much, are the Thracians. Eastern Macedonia. No, east of Macedonia, all the way to the Black Sea, guy. Not Eastern Macedonia. Western Vardar Macedonia and uh, Albania, Montenegro, uh, Bosnia, up into Croatia, this Adriatic coast, yeah. going again into the western part of Vardar Macedonia, are the Illyrians. Right, so they were there, but they were attacking Macedonian tribes. The Illyrians did. Um, uh, what Philip, Philip was often fighting Illyrians, right? He was fighting Illyrians as what? Part Hellen, part Thracian? He was fighting the Illyrians as Macedonian. But in a Macedonian sense. It's, it's, they weren't Hellenes. Listen to everybody. 
because this the guy doesn't know. He, I don't think he's willing to learn anyway. But to you that's listening to me, Macedonians, this is well known fact. You can check. You can check everything that I say. Macedonians, of all the other peoples, let's say. Okay, let's compare Macedonians and Hellenes. Hellenes had one way of burial system, a burial custom, right? They had a one way of of um, how do you call the uh, a burial system, right? Burying their dead. Macedonians had a totally different system from all the Greeks. From all the Greeks, Macedonians buried their dead under the uh, big mounts. The, the Hellenes, they they um, what you call the Hellenes uh, lit them on fire. They didn't bury their their, their um, very rarely, right? That among the other things as the language as well is an indication that. Macedonians were not Hellenes, guy. You should read Hesiod as well. Hesiod. Ah, uh, uh, let me. Let, let's continue. Let's let's see what this guy's gonna tell. Um, and I guess a little bit about the Thracians and the Illyrians. We don't know a whole lot about. Them. Sorry. <laughs> um, they weren't as uh, sophisticated as as the Hellenes, as the Greeks, and as the Macedonians. There's not a lot of written record. We don't really have a whole lot of information about their their language, customs, culture. Uh, not they used koine, just as uh, the Jews under Roman Empire. Yeah, yeah, they did because of, of of what Alexander did. So a whole lot is known. Certainly not as much as we know about the Greeks. Um, yeah, they do. You know much about the Greeks because they they um, they were complaining constantly to Rome. Because uh, of of uh, Macedonian yoke and because of Seleucid yoke and Antigonus yoke, right? Because if they were Hellenes, Macedonians, the Greeks, the rest of the Greeks would say, "Hey, man, we don't want you guys. We want a different ruler, but Greek." No, they went to the Romans and saying Macedonians have put a a, a, a heavy yoke on us. Hopefully, this guy can understand. But if you want a little bit of, of context, uh, the Thracians seem to be centered around the modern city of Plovdiv in Bulgaria. Uh, Plovdiv, by uh, a lot of records that I've, I've seen, suggests that it is the oldest city in Europe. And it was a very important uh, city to the Thracians. So we can think of you know Thrace kind of centered in modern day Plovdiv. Um, mm. The Illyrians, we can think of the equivalent being the modern-day city of Škoder in Albania, which borders the um, which borders Montenegro. Not quite. Over there was pretty much the influence of Epirus, uh, and this guy that after Alexander, um, he went to the Illyrians and he went to the Dalmatian coast. So the the bulk of the Illyrians was in the Dalmatian coast. Uh, I'm not saying there weren't any Alba there, there weren't Albanian uh, Illyrians in Albania today, but there were. But the bulk, the main, the motherland, so to speak, to, to the Illyrians was uh, the uh, let's say Kosovo, big part of Serbia, all the way to the Dalmatian coast, and of course down to Albania. So, Greeks, Hellenes to the south, Thracians to the east, Illyrians to the. So he's trying to he's trying to give like a picture. Uh, that, that what they they are trying to do now, today the Greeks, the Bulgar, the Bulgarians, and the Albanians is is nothing new, right? Because as per this guy, back in antiquity, th th you got the Hellenic uh, influence in, from the south, you got the Illyrian influence from the west, and you got the Thracian influence from the west, from the east, which is Greeks from the south, Albanians from the west, and then you got um, the the Bulgarians from the east, right? How how can how dare you? <laughs> right. The West, uh, in the middle of, in the central part oh, of, this is going to be interesting. Let's of see. Uh, Vardar Macedonia, uh -huh. in the Vardar Valley, we yeah. have the Paeonians. The Paeon see what I'm trying? So, Paeonians, as I said, Paeonia means upper Ionia. Ionia means uh, Greece proper today. Because before the Hellene came, the Hellenes, the Greeks, before they came, the Pelasgians were here, and uh, and they they called themselves Yunza for people, a word for people. They used Yunza, 
which means young bull. Uh, you, you remember when the uh, uh, Christ was on the cross and he says, the young bulls of Bashan surround me? He was minting the young bulls, the young, the young people, the young Romans that were, that were surrounding him. So the young people, Macedonians had that kind of concept. So that's why you get Yoni Yon or Yun for uh, Yunta or um, Deta or Yunti um, and Ia, which is an ancient Macedonian word for land. That's what, uh, similar as the Saxons has it in uh, 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 England, right? Scotland, uh, Iceland or something like that. Um, so, Macedonians yeah. are not as important as the other three civilizations. They're kind of a blend, it seems like, of these three civilizations. So, Ionia, right? I was talking about Ionia, Pa Ionia. Pa means upper. Um, when the Hellenes came, the Herodotus himself says that they found Athen uh, Athens as a Pelasgian village. And the Hesiod says that um, when, the, when Hellenes were coming into the land, right uh, they pushed the Pelasgian people up north and to the coasts and to the uh, islands but the mother the mother the Pelasgian mothers themselves continued the tradition of the Pelasgian and the Pelasgian language because they were teaching their children the Pelasgian language the old now I'm trying to connect Pelasgians with Macedonians that they were not Hellenes they were Pelasgian in origin because the old the original name for Pella the the um, um, what you call the, uh, the the capital of Macedonia is Peles, Pelasgi, Peles. Uh, the Peloponnes, right, comes from Pelasgian pre-Hellenic time, right? Um, Pelagonia, we have a, a big, a big flat land, big uh, 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 agricultural land in in Republic of Macedonia today, or or as this uh, uninformed guy would say, Vardar Macedonia, but Republic of Macedonia today has a big agricultural land that's called Pelagonia. Ring a bell with Pelasgians? Something like that? Yeah? No? Maybe? Okay. So, Macedonians were of Pelasgian ancestry. They were not Hellenes. Hesiod himself says that Pelasgians were not Hellenes. And they spoke different language than the Hellenes. Alright, guy? Civilizations uh, and um, the Peonians appear to be based out of the city of Veles, the modern city. Now, you have today's uh, modern Bulgarian Academy of Sciences saying, stating the territory of ancient Macedonia. If ancient Macedonians territory and Paeonians territory kind of uh, mingled together and they were living together, they, they were not waging war with, it, with, it, with each other. I can only conclude that it is we're talking about maybe different tribes of the same people, of the same ancient nation, so to speak. Not in a today sense, but a nation in the sense of many tribes coming together, many tribes of one origin. All right, guy. The of Venice right. and um... so he considers the Paeonians as totally different people than Macedonians, which is a mistake. North Macedonian, Vardar Macedonia. See, North Macedonia, he. He goes with his narrative, broskis, because uh, his country of origin, I would say, has this policy towards Macedonia, which is nomadic, <laughs> put at best, because what they're trying to do, they're trying to take over the land of Macedonia, broskis, and they're not even giving any respect to the Macedonians, or let's say the people that live there, they, they, don't, they don't acknowledge what those people have to say about themselves, right? And this goes with, with this narrative, right? And this goes with this guy's, uh, um, what you call, native, native country. It's a nomadic. It's a nomadic, and you can look it up. Uh, you can look up the nomadic uh, character of the Bulgarians uh, in early times, all right? The other civilization, again, just, that's similar to Paeonia in the sense uh -huh. that it's not very, um, it, it's not one of the major civilizational zones, is Dardania. Dar now he got me. Now he got me. I don't know what to do, guys. Oh, those Dardanians. Listen. You should go back to reading the ancient sources. And ancient sources, I believe Hesiod himself, again, talks about how Macedon, these are mythological figures, 
but Macedon turns out that it turns out that it's not. They found his remains, Macedon. Um, Macedon, right? Macedon guy who was, uh, I believe, he was a Nephilim guy. He was a descendant of fallen angels and earthly women, right? And these are these were the 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 the, the big guys, the, the guys of all, the guys of renown, right? So Macedon had a, a cousin, a close cousin called Dardan. So how can you say, if, if mythology, if, if shadow of reality, how can you say the Macedonians are, 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 are different people, the Dardanians, right? They're not. Macedonians are closely related to Dardanians, right? I would say even that they were the same nation of, of tribes back in antiquity. Well, let's move forward. Let's see what this guy has to say. Dardania is located... Uh, Dardania is okay. in modern in in the northern part of Varda Macedonia, right. northern North Macedonia, and Kosovo as well, which is Serbia, right? So, when Alexander fought the Illyrians, he fought near the the the, the town of now listen near the town of Pelium. They were Pelasgians origin as well. There, those Dardanians, they were of Pelasgian origin as well. They had a, a city, a town called Pelium, and they were Illyrians. On the Dardanian land. So similar, I would say, back then, Macedonians were closely related. The Pelasgians were of of or of Venetai origin, right? The Venetais, even uh, I believe uh, Homer speaks about them or Herodotus as well. And um, I would say the Pelasgians were similar, like today we can call Slavic people, just so you can uh, get a picture of it. So Dardanians and uh, were not different, uh, so different than Macedonians. They could well be mixed between Macedonians and Illyrians, but both together, or the three uh, entities together, were of same origin, which which means that they were connected. They were um, cousins, so to speak. They also had a name, uh, name for a town called Pelium. We have Pella, we have Pelagonia, Peloponnese, and you got the Pelasgians guy into Kosovo and right. South Serbia. Right. The Dardanians seem to be closely related to the Illyrians, but there you go. probably have a little bit of Thracian influence. They're probably like a blend. Uh, what? The Thracian? And of the Thracians and the Illyrians. Yeah, and probably, the right? capital of Dardania appeared, appears to be the modern-day city of, of Skopje. So again... Ah! <laughs> he got me again. So the modern city of Skopje, I believe, was founded by the Romans. Um, no, it was it was all the, it goes all the way back to pre Neolithic time. Uh, you got Neolithic uh, couple of uh, villages, couple of uh, neighborhoods. Neolithic neighborhoods were connected with roads, and uh, they had a, a, a unique culture. But I'm not really familiar that the Dardanians had uh, Skopje as their capital. Again. Um... Thracians, Illyrians, Hellenes, major civilizations. Yeah, yeah. Everybody except Macedonians. Paeonians and Dardanians, minor civilizations. But even though they conquered the world, right? And this is kind of the what what the uh -huh. region of Macedonia looks like oh, around okay. the year 400 BC. The other important, not not related to Macedonia, but another important civilization on the Balkans, just to kind of round round out what the Balkans yeah. looks like at this time, uh -huh. are the Dacians. The Dacians are. Um, uh, they occupy modern-day Romania. If you are familiar with the Romanian car maker Dacia, that is named after the Dacians, as the Dacians are part of the modern Romanians' uh, national mythology. So I believe he's trying to uh, flirt with the Vlachs in the Balkan, uh, because the, they would... Uh, me personally, I think the Vlachs came from the Roman legions, and... They also have a saying in, in, in Balkan affairs, of course, but not chauvinistically, right? We should all get together and, and, and you know, talk about these things and uh, give respect to each other. But, but I believe this guy is trying to flirt with the, with the Vlachs because they, they come most of the uh, part which is now Romania or back in antiquity, which was Dacia. And Dacia, before the Roman uh, set their colonies there, as Machiavelli would put, they... They were part of the Venetai family, which is the which is the Pelasgian family, which is one big family 
of peoples, uh, just like uh, I believe they're the ancestors of uh, of today's uh, Slavic people. But anyway, let's see what this guy mean, uh, thinks. So that's what the Balkans looks like prior to uh, the reigns of Philip and Alexander. So hmm. let's 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 dive into ancient Macedon. Um, ancient Macedon. So let's dive into ancient Macedon. Okay, Samuel's fortress. God bless you, bro. But we need to talk. Uh, is ruled by the Argead dynasty and yeah. is centered around the city of Pella. Mm -hmm. So Pella is. You mean Pella? As written on ancient coins that comes from Pelasgians. A, um, a city that kind of corresponds roughly to modern Thessaloniki. It, it, it is not Thessaloniki from what we can tell, but it's pretty cl close. So uh, this ancient Macedon is centered around Aegean Macedonia yeah. um, near modern day uh, Thessaloniki. Now, there is some. Now, ancient Macedonia, he said, was centered. There. That doesn't mean that the, the rest of the part of Macedonia was not Macedonia, right? Because the Argia dynasty consolidated what they consolidated. They did not consolidate Upper Macedonia in the beginning because those tribes were fierce. As uh, Peter Green of Oxford would say, they had regularly animal sacrifices. And who knows? They were dancing around the fires. Uh, they were fierce, bro. They were dancing around the fires and they may well... Um, uh, practiced human sacrifice in a way. This is this is speculation and conjecture, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay, so Argia dynasty created the Macedonian kingdom, created a kingdom which was Macedonian in character, but did not um, uh, occupy all parts of Macedonia, right? Because that's how much they were able. The Argia dynasty was able to consolidate. No right. debate on whether the ancient Macedonians are in fact Greeks or not Greeks, mm. whether they were part of the Hellenic realm or whether they were not part of the Hellenic realm. Right. The reason for this confusion oh. comes from uh, one that the modern Slavic Macedonians, as I mentioned in the previous video, mm. um, have a theory that uh, one of the theories on the on the origins of the modern Slavic Macedonians is that they're descendants of the ancient Macedonians. Um, so the people who subscribe to this theory like to separate ancient Macedonia from the rest of the Hellenic world. Uh, this is helped out by the fact that ancient uh, records show that the ancient Greeks did reference the did make reference to the Macedonians as barbarians. God bless you. So you have essentially the Greeks who have under the you know the polis system as we call it under the the more civilized uh, Greeks. But remember, all of the Hellenes had a polis system. Except, there's one exception, right? In all of the Greek world. in all, I'm, I'm talking about Black Sea colonies. I'm talking about Sicilian colonies. Huh? I'm talking about Cyrene colonies or whatever, down in Egypt. The, all of them had a polis system. Except for Macedonia, which was a kingdom. Right? Okay, this, this, this is not strange to this guy at all. He just accepts it. That every, uh, every Greek, except uh, for the Macedonian, uh, had a different... Um, uh, how should I say, state um, state system in a way. That's huge. That's logical inconsistency right there. City states in the south, like Athens, uh, they used to refer to the Macedonians as barbarians. Now, a lot of people. Barbaric means the one that speaks a different language. That's the literal translation, right? And we call it barbari, uh, the one that's barbari, the one that's not talking, that's talking gibberish, all right? We'll look at that and say, oh, this must mean that the ancient Macedonians were separate from the other Greeks. Yes, of course, I would say that. Because they were referred to as barbarians. Because they tell us now we're not Greeks because we don't speak Greek. Now, when you, when you tell them that ancient Macedonians Ancient Greeks uh, uh, talked about Macedonians as, as barbaric, as people that don't speak Greek. How can you say that I'm, um, you see, I, I go by your standard. You say that I'm not Greek because I don't speak Greek now, right? And, and then you have ancient Macedonians that didn't speak Greek, but you tell them, you tell everybody that they were Greek. It's madness. It's just logic 101, people.
All right. This is not exactly the case. So if we look at Greece at this time, if you look at the Hellenic civilization... Uh, he's, he's going to start relativizing, I, I, I bet. Again, it is not unified. There are different... Uh, so it's not unified? He's, he's right about that? Because there were uh, upper Macedonian tribes that were fierce, that, that were fighting with the Illyrians as well as uh, with the other Macedonian tribes. But Peter Green from Oxford himself says that those were Macedonians, even though they were so fierce. Okay? They had, diff they, they had same customs and everything. States, there are different uh, portions of the Hellenic world who think of themselves differently. Different portions of the Hellenic world that different about them that that thought about themselves differently, really. Who? Well, let's see. Maybe he'll explain. And some of them are more civilized, quote unquote, civilized. Uh, this is a pure others. conjecture on his side, guys. He he didn't he didn't give an example that some Greeks were were so different than than the other. So Greeks. the Athenians, for example, think of themselves as quite civilized. They have. Um, philosophy. But they, they, the Athenians did not think about the Spartans as barbarians. And they did not think that any other Hellene was a barbarian. Except for Macedonians. That should ring a bell, guy. They have uh, the concept of democracy. They have a very sophisticated civil... Uh, Sparta wasn't a democracy, so that was not the criteria of whether one is barbarian or not. It was the language. Uh, Sorry, broski, but you're just lying, bro. You you look like a wise guy, but you're lying. Uh, this is opposed to the Macedonians, for example, who don't live under a city-state. They have a kingdom, which some of the ancient Greeks uh, thought was a little bit more archaic or backwards to have kingdoms. She's just fantasizing right now. Let's see how he how he's, uh, he's doing. The fashionable thing at the time was to have democracies. Oh, so fashion. the Athenians viewed them as... The fashionable thing of the time was to have a kingdom, not democracies. The other way around, guy. Every other, every other kingdom was a kingdom. Every other nation, uh, ethnicity was a kingdom. It was not uh, a democracy. It was rare. Uh, kind of backward. And these kind of people are in politics right now. And these kind of people are, 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 are generating the hatred between Balkanian people. That's all I have to say. They still held to the older Greek customs of kings. They of tyrants, but within the city, it was never a, a, a king, right? He's trying to spin here. Uh, we're not nearly as as educated or sophisticated as the Athenians, for example. So that was not the criteria again to being a um, barbarian. It was uh, the language and the tribe. Pelasgians were not Hellens. Ancient, so ancient sources tell us that. So they're seen as kind of backwards. They were seen um, as backwards. This, but it was uh, chauvinistic from the Athenian side. This does not, again, mean that they're not part of the Greek sphere. Uh, by, oh, a Greek sphere, that's a thing. By all accounts, they do speak... Uh, but it depends what you mean by Greek. Remember? The, the Jews at the time of, of Jesus spoke um, Koine language. Uh, while dying, Caesar himself spoke a uh, coin a sentence. The whole Roman world spoke coin a language. So they were all Greek, they were all Hellen. What's going on here? A Hellenic language. Hellenic um, language, all right. They worship the Greek gods. Now, about the Greek gods, the, um, you, I, I, this guy should have heard the saying, you don't trust the Danaeans even when they bring presents. It's a saying from the Trojan War, right? When the Hellenes, the Danaeans, as they were called, they, they weren't trustworthy, okay? Now, Danaeans. Danaeans got their name from the Macedonians because they presented themselves while coming to the Balkan Peninsula as the people of Dan. And that's the, the, the ancient Jewish tribe of Dan, which was, uh, um, which was a, um, a, a rebel tribe that started building uh, ships. Uh, uh, the judge Devora in the Bible says about this, uh, mentions this, that they were, they were dealing with the ships while they were supposed to be dealing with defending their brothers, the other uh, Jewish tribes. Anyway, so they came to uh, the Balkan Peninsula. And we know how, how uh, ancient Jews were. 
about the the local cultures that they met. They incorporated everything of that culture, even more, as God put it. They they become even worse than the cultures that were uh, bef before them on the land, right? So it, when the Naians came to the Balkan Peninsula, they took the pantheon of the Pelasgians people, and they made their own pantheon from Ze, the ancient Macedonian Pelasgian god of the light, became Zeus, or Zeus, right, and others. Um, uh, you can we're gonna go through the the Macedonian pantheon uh, in the other videos that I'm gonna make about the uh, tracing the script of the ancient Macedonian language and the, the, the two Macedonian academics that deciphered the middle text of the Rosetta Stone claim that Macedonian uh, they, they claim that the middle text of the Rosetta Stone was written in ancient Macedonian language um, and uh, it, their reading is coherent the, you, you, they read the Danaeans there they read ancient Egyptian gods there as per their reading which was ancient Macedonian closely related to today's Macedonian Right? You would be surprised. So, yeah, the Danaeans or the Hellenes, the, we call them Elini, or belonging to El. The ancient word for God, the ancient Jewish word for God was El. So, the Macedonians called them Danaeans because they were tribe Dan, but they also called them Elines or Hellenes because they were belonging to El, not El or Elini. Okay? But they, nobody asks us this, bro. They, they, they make their own uh, history, bro. It's, it's childish. The Macedonians compete at the Olympics, which are exclusively... So he just, uh, he's doing a so sophism here. He's just putting much information so you'll be, you'll be you know, mesmerized and then you, you, you have to accept what he's saying without, without testing it with logic. Macedonians, not all Macedonians, um, how do you say, not all Macedonians were allowed to go into the Olympics. That should tell you something. The ones that did, they were called Philhelen. Alexander the First Philhelen. Uh, um, he was. He claimed that he was Hellene in ancestry, at least part of his ancestry, and that's why history got uh, history put the nickname Philhelen next to his name. Now, now think about this. If he was Philhelen, that means that he wasn't Helen. He was just a lover of Hellenes, right? Uh, 101 logic, people. 101 logic. Reserved for Greeks. So what about those that weren't uh, um, approved to be in the Olympics? What's the reason they weren't approved to be in the Olympics? For Any Hellenic idea? people. So there is enough there to suggest that they are definitely Nobody within asks. the Hellenic realm. But, but there's enough for you to make a childish argument without even testing it. All they're right? on the outskirts and they're not as, as civilized or sophisticated as the other Greeks and therefore are considered... Yeah, but so they they saw the the they saw the the Persian world as as much more barbaric, but they never thought that they they were Greeks, right? Quote, I'm just using this guy's standard. Barbarians, um, at least within the within the Greek um, within the Greek realm. So, within the Greek realm, that's minor Asia too. So, right? if we look at uh, what Persia was this ancient Macedonia, mm. we see uh, a major figure emerge out of here in the middle of the 4th century, uh, 4th century BC. Um, and this is Philip II. Yeah. So what Philip II is, is famous for is uniting the Hellenic realm under a single authority. Under I believe he's going to talk about the Hellenic League. Um, he probably doesn't know what the word hegemon means, but let's see. It's going to be interesting. Under the authority of the Macedonian kingdom. Right. The way he did this was um, through a, a very unique military tactic. The conquest, bro. Say it. He conquered the, the rest of Greece. So the rest of Greece comes together. The rest of the Hellenes, uh, so you would say, would come together against one... Hellenistic overlord and then they call the Romans to rule them and not themselves or not another Helen Hellenistic ruler this just doesn't make any sense at the time which is the phalanx uh, phalanx yeah. is a is a infantry formation that the Macedonians uh, utilized very effectively yeah. to conquer the other Greeks right so the other Greeks. during the reign of Philip conquer II the, of Macedon the, Greeks, the rest of the Hellenic realm falls under Macedonian control mm. Uh, this unified Hellenic realm is called the Hellenic League.
I told you. <laughs> oh, he got me now. No, I gotta go. He got me now. I gotta go. Listen, Hellenic League. There was a need to create the Hellenic League, and there is a reason for that. The reason to have a Hellenic League is because uh, uh, Philip came or came from a realm that was consolidated, and that was Macedonia. What he needed to consolidate was the Hellenes. So he created the Hellenic League. The Hellenic League was a, a, a consolidation of the Hellenes. That's why it was called Hellenic League. With a Macedonian hegemon. The hegemon doesn't always need to, need, need to be of, of, of same origin as, as the, the, the subject. There are many cases in history where the subjects themselves ask for a foreign leader to rule over them. So this guy, I know he wears glasses, but he's not that smart, guys. Sorry, Samuel Zbrowski, but there's a much better way of doing this, and that's asking Macedonians themselves what they think about Macedonian history. All right? Or the Corinthian League, the League of Corinth. There's a few different names for it, but basically... The yeah, so, you know, so whichever, whichever suits them. The Corinth League, the Hellenic League, it's not Pan-Hellenic League. Now, you've got to notice that. It's not a Pan-Hellenic League. If, if it was Pan-Hellenic League, it would mean all of the, the Hellenes. It was a Hellenic League, which included the Hellenes with the Macedonians as their hegemon, as their overlord. All right? This is a league of the Greek uh, states yeah. unified under Philip II and the Macedonian hegemon, kingdom. As they would put now, it. It was barbarian. Uh, not long after Philip... Uh, uh, not long after Philip manages to unite the Greeks under his control, he is assassinated. True. Um, uh, after his assassination, his son, Alexander III, who we uh, more commonly... Alexander III, the Macedonian. Uh, the title was the Macedonian. Referred to as Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great came later, and that's not... Um, but that's not... Uh, how should I say this? That didn't come from the Macedonians control of uh, of the kingdom of Macedon and of all the Greeks um, uh, together it, who are part of this Hellenic League. Mm. What Alexander is, is known for is challenging the eternal enemy of the Hellenic peoples, uh, the Persians. So he challenges the Persians, he invades Persia. The eternal enemy of the Hellenic people, right? Not the Macedonian people because Macedonia was at one time vassal, vassal state of the Persians. And that's the time when they consolidated, when they got their shit together, so to speak. They were uh, exporting, exporting uh, much, much uh, uh, of their wood, um, of their trees, to the Greek city-states. And that's how Macedonia uh, came to be a, a, a stronger state, while the, the Greek states... The Greek city-states were fighting uh, amongst each other. Right? And conquers the Persian Empire. So with his unified... Um... He unified. He took the Greeks because he needed not as much that... He needed a safe mainland, right? Alexander Philip did. That's why they had to conquer the Greeks. As well as they needed the Athenian, um, Athenian ships. Uh, Athens had a, a great number of ships. So they used that ship, those ships uh, to uh, attack and... Uh, Keep safe the Aegean Sea and attack Persia, what have you. Greek force, he invaded. The, the Greek force. When you say Greek force, bro, he took, as Peter, as Peter Green from Oxford would, would, would say, he took those um, uh, Greek soldiers there, Greek soldiers, not Macedonian soldiers. He took the Greek soldiers to have them as uh, ransom, or as, um, how do you say, if, if their family. Uh, or, or, or many other Greeks in the mainland, um, in Achaia, uh, started rising ag against Alexander while he was in Persia, he would, he would keep those Greeks in the army as a, as a, as a tool, as a tool for negotiations, all right? This, this guy. Fades Asia Minor uh, into the Levant, into the Near East, right. conquers the Persians and expands. But there were more Greeks fighting against Mac Macedonia back then on the Persian side, then there were Greeks fighting with Macedonians on the Macedonian side. I just figured you guys should know this. This, this Hellenic Empire 
well right. into Asia, all the way to India and right. Central Asia. Right. He and if you ask those people now, today, they would say that they, they were, they're not Greeks. Kalashi people, if you ask them, they would say they're not Greeks. Uh, there, there, there's a couple of others over there. Um, Hunza people as well. If you ask them, they would say they're not Greeks. They're, they're, of, they're of Macedonian descent. Forms basically He's the just greatest empire known at that time. Yeah. Um, it's still one of the largest empires yeah. in human history. And this is why it's known as Alexander the Great. Right. Um, however, Alexander also dies under uh, mysterious circumstances, um, a little bit more mysterious than Philip II. We don't know if Alexander is assassinated, if he's mm -hmm. poisoned, if he dies of some disease, but he dies quite young yeah. in his early 30s. In 33 years old, just as uh, Jesus, he was 33 years old. Oh, guys, I'm a Macedonian, but I don't put Alexander in a moral framework because he did some bad stuff, guys. He is still Macedonian, no, no question about that, but... Uh, he did some bad stuff and he tried to unite the world through the sword and he even tried to make Babylon his um, his capital but God himself wrote that Babylon should not be constructed should not be unsettled blah 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 he had some plans about Babylon so in the city of Babylon tragic destiny about Alexander on in Persia so once Alexander dies, his massive empire gets uh, broken up into various kingdoms. There's the uh, you know kingdom that controls the Asian portions of the empire. You have a, a kingdom that controls the North African Egyptian parts of the empire, um, <clears throat> and then you so you got the Seleucids, the, the Asian part. You got the uh, the uh, Ptolemaeus, Ptolemaeans that that controlled Egypt, some parts of Libya, I guess some parts of the Levant and uh, you have the uh, you have the Macedonians that control the Balkan Peninsula I believe and you have Antigonus or something the guy the ruled or no Cassander took over Macedonia after Alexander the death. the Balkans the Balkan region uh, that remains within the control of the Macedonians and the Argid dynasty so after the death of Alexander the Balkans um, and certainly Macedonia is still ruled over by the kingdom of Macedon of that Argia dynasty. They're still in control. Um, however, there is also Cassander. There was a general in Alexander's army. He took over, and after twelve years uh, of, I believe, a prison imprisoning um, Roxana, Olympia, and Alexander the Fourth. Mind you, he was twelve years old, Broskis, when when he got murdered by Cassander. So a new force rising to the west of, of Macedonia Which were the Romans. after the, the death of Alexander, and this is the Romans. The now, as I mentioned earlier, the Greeks, especially the ones in, in, in Pergamum, in Pergamum, they went very often, very often they went to the Romans complaining about Macedonian yoke. They didn't go to other Macedonians, they didn't go to other Hellenes, right? They were complaining about Macedonian rule. They went to the Romans. They went to the Romans. The Roman Empire, um, which everyone should be familiar with. Um, the Romans, after uh, the death of Alexander, start you know expanding, um, and and eventually they expand into the Balkan regions. Um, and they were entering from south to the north, and they 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 raised to the ground almost every town village, uh, small city in Macedonia. Now, they raised to the ground Carthage, and they raised to the ground Jerusalem. They killed over one million Jews. The Romans did. Who knows how many Carthaginians they killed when they, when they, when they uh, raised to the ground Carthage and when they pulled salt uh, on top of, of the ground. They, they were so thorough. They were so thorough. So when I say that the Romans took care of uh, every Macedonian inscription that was written in Demotic script, because they conquered Macedonia, that would be a surprise to you guys. But the Romans were very, very thorough, and they, 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 they went above and beyond to reach their goal. One example is Carthage, the other one is uh, 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 the Israel, right? The Jews, 
after 70, after AD 70, when they conquered them, uh, they destroyed them completely. The third one is Macedonia. They, they came from the south, they went up north, and they were with the Hellenes together. They drew the Macedonians out, right? And the Macedonians had to run north. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that later and to, to, let you, to, to give you a taste of who uh, the so-called Slavic people were. The In Slavic the year 220 BC, we see the Romans and the Macedonians start coming into conflict with one another. Now, um, at this time, there's a very kind of complex set of alliances in, in the Mediterranean. You have Romans who are allying with uh, Greeks who are not happy under Macedonian. That's the rest of the Greeks. All of the Greeks were not happy. Why don't you say that, Broski? All of the Greeks were not happy. All of the Greeks were not happy with the Macedonian rule. And I don't blame them. Don't get me wrong. But it's just unfair and dishonest to try to hide this, this fact rule uh you have the macedonians um so he says macedonians now i thought they weren't macedonians align themselves with the carthaginians who are the roman right. enemy right so macedonia i believe philip uh the fifth if i'm not mistaken maybe perseus no philip the fifth i believe he sent an, an, an embassy to carthage right and they went through italy through southern italy and he got stopped by a Roman centurion or a Roman guard, right, as a checkup. So that embassy, that ambassador to the Carthaginian from Macedonia was caught. Um, but he got out the first time. He got out. He told them that he's going to the Romans to express, um, <coughs> sorry, an, an agreement to propose an agreement for alliance to the Romans. But on the way back, but he went to Carthage. On the way back, he got caught again by the Romans, and he got murdered. And that's how the animosity between Romans and Macedonians came to be. Me, uh... you can you can check me on this, guys. Don't take don't take for, for granted what I say. You go you go and do your diligence and uh, check whatever I'm saying. You know, further to the west, so you have a kind of a complex set of. of... It's not complex at all. It's not complex. Greeks were with the Romans. Romans were against the Carthaginians and Macedonians. That's it. Uh... Of alliances growing in, in in these in this period with the rise of the Roman Empire. Romans being the protectors of all Hellenes, as they claim. Why didn't they put Macedonia in there? They were Hellenes to this guy, according to this guy. Empire. Nevertheless, um, around the year 220, the Romans and the Macedonians clash, uh, and right. now well, there is a series like of four wars called the Macedonian Wars. Uh, yeah. These go from roughly 220 BC to about 120 BC, in which the Macedonians and the Romans war with each other, uh, the Macedonians to maintain control of the Balkans, the Romans to conquer the Balkans. Um, it's quite obvious. Yeah, I would agree with that now. Yep, I would agree. Obvious from, they conquered. Uh, uh, anyone who knows a little bit about this history, that the Romans win. The Roman Empire conquers after these series of four wars, manages to defeat the Macedonians. I'm just wondering if he's going to go really thoroughly here and, and say what the Romans did after that. Let's see. And conquers the Balkans, expands even further east and conquers these other kingdoms who are descendants of Alexander's empire and the Romans. Right. When they conquered Macedonia, Seleucid came and uh, he tried to congratulate them, the Romans, but uh, the Romans were so convinced and so resolved um, and they were using the Greeks as a tool, and they 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 said they 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 told Seleucid that he is not welcomed, his his gratitude is not welcomed, that he should go back and, and leave the Greeks alone. So there you go, Macedonians were Hellenes. And other craziness in this world. Romans essentially established control over the Balkans and the Near East. Hmm. Um, about the demographics. So once Rome conquers the Balkans, it's, it doesn't really change the demographics too much. Um, it does, the, the, the Romans are kind of famous for population transfers. They'll take people who are the... So I don't know what he's saying. He's contradicting himself right there. But... Who, have, who they have just conquered and moved them to another part of the empire. They'll take people from a different part of the empire, move them to that 
part of the empire that has been conquered in order to mix things up, make rebellions against the Romans more difficult by mixing the people together. <clears throat> so we have some idea that this happened in Macedonia, in the Balkans, after the now, Roman. They took 150,000 um, people from Epirus, um, northern Greece, southern Albania. Um, but rest of the Macedonians, which were, I believe, around 2 million people, the rest of them, they had to run north. They had to run north, and there are um, um, uh, inscriptions in Slavic languages in uh, close to Moscow, um, the Muscovit, the Muscovit, the Muscovit, the Muscovit. Um, how should I say this? It's not a kingdom, but you know, the, the Muscovit subject uh, was telling about themselves that they were ancestors of ancient Macedonians that came, I believe from uh, 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 Macedonian refugees that were, that were running from running away from the Romans uh, because logically the Romans came from north going uh, going um, from south going north and then the Macedonian logically would go north all right so there was after especially when Romans were raising down raising to the ground every village and, and town in Macedonia you, you, you have to imagine the the exodus that happened there right? But there were still Macedonians there. There were still Macedonians there. Uh, um, Saint Paul himself talks about Macedonians that were accompanying him, right? And even Macedonian came uh, in a dream to Paul. Uh, take over. Um, also, the Romans uh, begin um, settling retired soldiers in the region. So, uh, in, uh, but not the, the whole region. I got a pause. The, the Romans settled their Romans next to strategic, uh, on strategic places, like uh, the, the, the highways. Via Ignatia Highway in, in Philippi was on the Via Ignatia, I believe. Philippi was a Roman colony. Uh, uh, even the Bible says that. And, uh, and also you have many Vlachs uh, in Ochrit. Uh, the, the, the Via Ignatia is closed there. So that's where the Romans were settling. Not in the mountains. Not in the mountains, broski, because... The logically, what the people that could not run away from the Romans, they would uh, subside in the uh, in the mountain regions, uh, which were tough to get, uh, right? So that's why in the in the in the high in the high places in Macedonia today, in the in those villages, you have so many ancient customs there that are isolated, right? That that you don't have any explanation, like the Miazzi, Vifchani, as well. That's really ancient customs there. It's not Bulgarians. It's not Serbian. It's not any other than Macedonians. Okay. Yeah, for example, is, um, is famous for this. Romans from all over the empire, from Spain, Germany, Armenia, from all over the, the empire, uh, get settled in, in, in Skopje. And these Romans are, are, like I said, veterans. Yeah, but they're Romans. They're Romans. Uh, these are people who have campaigned. As I said, in the cities, but in the mountainous region, Macedonians were still there, all right? And I don't see anybody has a problem with Jews, especially the neighboring countries of Macedonia today, because the Jews were expelled, but there were still Jews there, right? They were never totally expelled from the from their country. Same as Macedonians, but they have a problem with Macedonia and not with um, Israel today. And uh, with the Roman army who have retired and now uh, are given land by the Roman Empire to, yeah. to work, to farm with their families. And Skopje is a major... Um, it is a major, a major yeah. city where this where this yeah. occurs. Uh, there's actually a few necropolises, Roman cemeteries uh, around the modern day city of Skopje. That I'm not sure if they're open to the public or not, but uh, they're yeah. They but have Skopje is only one city, right? That's like ten percent of, uh, not even maybe five percent of the whole territory of Macedonia. Have been dug up uh, by archaeologists, and there are uh, we can see. People from all over the Roman Empire were settled there and buried in these necropolises. So we know that occurred. Um, hmm. However, as far as like Illyrians, Thracians, those civilizations still kind of uh, are, are left intact simply because um, the way the ancient world works is if you are pretty far away from the center of power, it's kind of... So Maced if, if Macedonia was a sphere of influence between Illyrians, Thracians, and Hellenes, they deconstructed that subject of, that we call Macedonia, that as per this guy was an influence 
uh, a territory with, influ with neighboring influence. So why, if that's the case, why the Romans didn't go after the Illyrians and then the Thracians and then the Hellenes? Because they, if that's the case, they, they lost those three neighboring tribes of peoples, right? They lost. How was Rome certain that one day they wouldn't come together and make this subject again with their influence? It simply was not the case. The Macedonia was not a, a territory that was influenced by neighboring tribes or peoples. It was an, a territory that got the name from the people that lived there as any other territory, which were the Macedonians. Okay? Difficult to assimilate you. So um, if the Roman Empire, which is... What was difficult to assimilate was the Macedonians. Other peoples were, re was, were really relatively easy to assimilate. Now, Macedonians had their own customs, had their own empires, worldly empires. If Roman culture came to conflict with the Macedonian culture, Roman culture would be destroyed. And that's why when you see the map of, Roman, of, uh, of, of cities that are founded by the Romans, you wouldn't see any city that was founded by the Romans in Macedonia or in the wider region there, right? In the Western Europe, you can see dozens, dozens of Roman cities that were founded by the Romans, okay? Not occupied, founded. Seated in Rome, um, it can't really uh, influence, let's say, distant parts of Thrace too much. It simply doesn't have the infrastructure, the communication isn't there for... Uh, he's just he's just creating a story here, The guys. Romans to assimilate people in distant parts of the, of the empire. So... Even though the Romans control this area, they're, they're not really assimilating it heavily, uh, at least not yet. This, this changes in the year, we're jumping ahead a bit here, uh, to the year 330 AD. Uh, the famous Roman Empire Emperor uh, Constantine the Great establishes the second Roman capital. Okay, so he's moving forward in, in history now, 330 AD. All right. In so by this time you got the Macedonians totally destroyed, you got the Macedonians expelled, most of them from the land, um, you got them really poor, as uh, St. Paul would put it, they were really poor but generous in giving, Okay, such is the case today. Constantinople. Everything, there's a, there's a limit for everything guys. On the, on the foundations of the, of the city of Byzantium, Byzantium becomes... Constantinople, uh, Constantine names it after himself, and this is now the second Roman capital meant to have more influence on the eastern parts of the empire, which are difficult to govern from Rome itself. Now, when this... Now, let's uh, see how this connects with Macedonia. The capital of Constantinople gets established in the year 330 uh, AD. Now, we can see a more uh, heavy assimilation of Thracians, of Illyrians, because as... Uh, as opposed to previously when they were on the distant, you know, uh, hint you know, when he says assimilation, he would have to say that they, they, they maybe accepted Roman administration, but as far as their um, uh, language, they were not naturalized Romans, right? Because they kept the Koina language, which was um, um, even in the age of Alexander and Philip. Interlands spin, of the Roman spin there. Empire. Now they are situated within a stone's throw of the new capital, of the eastern capital. And now, uh, once Constantinople gets established, we see a much more heavy. Everybody by now, if you are a history buff, you should all you should well known by now that Romans they did not assimilate. They what they did was they conquered, right? But they did not assimilate. They they would either kill, they would either do genocide. Or they would just rule you with your laws, but more strict laws. And more, um, let's say, if you have to pay a 10% tax, you would have to pay 20% tax under the Romans, right? But there was no changing, a, a crucial changing in its essence of the laws. And that's what Machiavelli learned from the Romans. When you, when you try to conquer somebody, you try to stick to their laws as much as possible, right? The assimilation of these... Illyrians, Thracians, Paeonians, Macedonians, uh, who haven't really been assimilated heavily, oh, become Macedonians. Roman. Um, and this, this occurs, again, quite significantly after... Quite significantly? No, no, no. In the, it's the other way around, bro. 
it's not quite significantly. Why would you say that they were Ro they were Romans? They were assimilated into what? Into Romans? No, Romans did not assimilate. If they assimilated, they assimilated into something that was that was early a Macedonian because they spoke Koine language. Okay. The after the establishment of Constantinople. So, um, from the fourth century BC to the fourth century AD, this is a very very. Uh, brief overview of those of that time period from prior to it's true it's brief but uh, this, I believe that you did this on purpose that's why it's brief Alexander the Great prior to the expansion of the ancient Macedonian kingdom through the Roman conquest through the establishment of Constantinople you should now have a good idea of uh, of this period of time thank you very much for watching and next time we will be discussing uh, the barbarian raids into the this uh, roman roman territory so until then again thank you for watching i will see you next time god bless you bro but you still need to learn a lot all right guys i really hope you you've uh, cleared some things in your head i really hope that i made some things clear to you guys because you know when he's when 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 people talk like like uh, like a some like a story when they tell you when they tell you something in a, in a version of a story it looks really compelling right but if it's if it, whether it's true or not you would have to kind of dig a little, dig deeper and, and use common sense <laughs> common sense sense says hey bro you should consult ancient sources and you should also consult Macedonians today of what they think about their history. That's all I have to say. God bless this guy. I hope he's not mad, bro, but I had to do this. If anything, we can always talk and you can uh, give me a call, Samuel Fortress. I'll put his link in the description so you can watch his videos. No biggie. But uh, people, we need to change, bros, because we need to change. And change comes from here. All right? Peace. Too fast, never last.